Whoa, it looks like things have developed in a sort of weird way over here. They say that tragedy plus time equals comedy, but in gaming, the real tragedy is the amount of time we have to wait between quality comedy games. Thankfully, in the opening moments of High on Life, as my talking gun belittlingly whispered to me that I was doing a great job as I shot dancing aliens in the face. Are you fine? fucking, did you think it was a good idea to go in here? What is wrong with you? I got the feeling I'd struck gold. While it has bugs and performance hitches, and occasionally frolics and unimpressive toilet humor, the latest from Rick and Morty creator Justin Roiland's Squanch Games largely succeeds at being the type of absurd space satire I've always wanted. Whether I was chatting with my shotgun about the merits of science and formulas. I'm not anti-science or anything like that. I'm not one of those crazies. I'm just like more into other shit, you know. Uh, I, I don't want to think about formulas or whatever, man. Covering myself in alien poop to sneak into a secure facility or inexplicably watching a full live action movie from the 90s on a nearby television. High on Life is a game that just knows how to have a good time. And there really aren't enough of those. Welcome to High on Life Store number 7923, your local Hyperbong Superstore. Please, no trampling of other patrons during the midnight launch. This delightfully inappropriate first-person shooter puts its comedic premise front and center, absolutely refusing to take itself seriously. After Earth is taken over by disgusting aliens who kidnap humans to be smoked as hallucinogenic drugs, you begin a ridiculous space odyssey to get revenge against the extraterrestrial cartel responsible. All the while, you're accompanied by the real stars of the show, your extremely rude arsenal. Are, are you happy now? We killed a kid! A kid is dead now! These these animate weapons, called Gatlians, are easily the best part of the adventure, and include Kenny, the easily flustered pistol that's basically Justin Roiland just doing his usual Rick and Morty thing. Listen, don't get used to that. We're not killing any more kids. I'm drawing the line, so savor it. Enjoy it. It happened. Tuck it away in the old memory book. Sweezy, the foul-mouthed sniper rifle that seems to be a reference to Halo's Needler. There we fucking go! Creature, who shoots his rapidly gestating children as ammo. What's this? What did we just pick up? Oh, right. Sorry. And my personal favorite, Gus, the surprisingly wholesome shotgun voiced by Curb Your Enthusiasm's J.B. Smoove. Holy shit, looks like someone got trampled to death. Turned them into a fruit roll-up. While some took a while to earn my love, spending an entire 16-hour journey with these guys held up right to my face ended up being a fantastic excuse for lots of amusing dialogue and character development. By the time credits rolled, I really didn't want to have to put my new best friends back in their holsters. That's due in large part to High on Life's mostly solid writing, which piles on dumb gags, curse-laden rants, and lots of TV screens airing idiotic shows like this one. And having sex all the time? And it's not a problem. It's fine. Uh, we don't like being told that what we're doing is wrong. You know, old people, we get horny. One level features an intentionally irritating alien who follows you around and rambles on, seemingly without end, until you finally unlock the ability to murder him dead. Another makes you go to Space Applebee's and have a full meal for no apparent reason. You can also find a movie theater playing the real-world movie from 1990, Demon Wind, complete with Mystery Science Theater 3000-like commentary via some nearby aliens, which you'd better believe I watched in its entirety. It's just uh, having a diabetic reaction. The campaign is only about eight hours long if you have the willpower and focus to ignore all of these delightful distractions and power through. So naturally, my first playthrough took me over 16. The entire thing is just packed with so much silliness and it's always exciting to spend time planet hopping through it. I never knew when I might run into something insane. In perfect harmony with High on Life's completely chaotic vibe, slinging your companion guns and firefights is over the top and occasionally a bit messy. Weapons are somewhat inaccurate and enemies flop around the battlefield shooting gloop at you, and in the opening hours, I worried there would be little more to combat than using pea shooter Kenny to mop up brainless ants. Wow, I feel really powerful. Do you feel powerful? We're unstoppable. Is this bloodlust? Am I feeling bloodlust right now? It doesn't help that even on the hardest difficulty, High 
on life is almost always incredibly easy to get through. You're given ample opportunity to restore your health and shield, and incoming bullets are almost always slow enough to be easily avoided. Luckily, once you gain some new tools like the jetpack or other interesting combat options like creatures' power to mind control enemies on the battlefield, or Gus's ability to suck up smaller bad guys right in front of him and then blast them to bits, things get a lot more interesting. There's still plenty to shake a fist at, though, like how weak the enemy variety is or how hostile aliens occasionally get stuck inside the environment or the incredibly perplexing decision to make the down button on the D-pad the default button for crouching. These things certainly don't make for the smoothest combat experience, and the fun comes from finding creative ways to clear each area of baddies, like how you can use Kenny's glob shot ability to toss enemies in the air, then juggle them with bullets until they explode, or how you can kill enemies that are behind cover by using Sweezy's object-piercing shots. It's definitely more chaotic and less finely tuned than your ideal shooter, but it's a pretty good sandbox for pulling off stupid and amusing kills, and that jives well with High on Life's energy. I call it my glob shot. It comes out of my trick hole. All Gatlians have a different kind of trick hole. My, mine does this. When your guns aren't shooting at things, they make trusty allies for getting through each level using their alternate firing modes, horrifyingly named their trick hole, which gives them functionality beyond killing things. Kenny can knock obstacles out of the way with his glob shot. Gus can create platforms by shooting his spinning blades into walls. Sweezy can shoot bubbles that slow time in a given area and more. I was pleasantly surprised at how fun it was to just run around searching for collectibles and hidden loot boxes. In Metroidvania fashion, as you unlock weapons and abilities, you'll gain access to new areas and secrets in locations you've already visited, which makes backtracking a worthwhile use of time. Collecting alien pesos by exploring is fairly rewarding too, like an improved version of Gus's enemy-sucking ability that lets him tear off their armor and give it to you. High on Life also has some crazy and memorable boss fights, which serve as loopy crescendos to each level and have you facing down an alien criminal of one persuasion or another. Not only are these fights the only parts where I felt legitimately challenged during combat, but the bosses you fight and the inane things they have you do are almost always fantastic punchlines to whatever that bad guy's whole deal was. So much so, in fact, that I actually felt kind of sad about having to viciously slaughter them. In one boss fight, the bad guy punished me in a way I won't spoil that made me have to pause for a bit and just laugh at the meta humor of it. It's the kind of dastardly attack I could never have seen coming. Hope those tummies are ready for some yummies. Bon appetit. Dude, take a fucking hint. Can't you see we're in the middle of a thing here? When you first start it up, High on Life gives you another bit of meta humor. A disclaimer warning that any glitches or bugs you may encounter are intentional satirical references to other games with glitches and bugs. That joke didn't make me laugh as much as I played, because it really is prone to bugs and performance issues that, while rarely bad enough to put a halt to the good times, were a regular irritation. At the time of this review, a performance patch has been deployed that appears to have fixed the worst of the issues. But in times of extreme stress, like a few of the more elaborate boss fights, I am still seeing some minor frame rate dips playing on an Xbox Series X. As for the bugs, they're usually minor annoyances, like the time I had a character lock up on me so I couldn't advance dialogue with him until I reloaded my save, or when a few enemies continued to stand around as intangible beings after I killed them. Whoa! Great sleuthing, detective! That was an S-rank interrogation! We talked about it. High on Life is an irreverent, absurd shooter that manages to shine with its outrageous humor, silly setting, and some really goofy, foul-mouthed guns that pull the whole thing together. Combat is a bit sloppy, especially during the first act, and the whole sci-fi adventure sometimes has an unpolished feel to it. But once you get some more tools of destruction and movement options, it rises to the occasion. Not all of its jokes find their punchline. Hey, how are you? My name's Colby, and before you ask, no, I'm not gonna try to sell you Gooper Cum or anything gross like that. I'm not anything like my two weird brothers. But with memorable boss fights, unique alt-fire exploration, and way more terrible movies to watch than I expected, this wacky journey is definitely worth your time. Another pipe? What the fuck? This is lazy. This is just lazy game development. This is lazy level design. I'm calling it out. Kotaku, Polygon, IGN, all of you. You got to very dock us down a couple points. <laughs> For more, check out our reviews of Call of Duty Warzone 2.0 and Need for Speed Unbound. And for everything else, stick with IGN.